Sometimes Mother Nature gives you the kick in the butt you richly deserve. I'm Roger, and I have my bride of 25 years Lorraine, and our only child, Jessica, who turned 23 last week. My 82-year-old mother, Frances, lives in an assisted living residence. As her only child, I have power of attorney to handle her legal and financial responsibilities. Her health is not good and has gotten much worse over the past year. I was 30 when I married Lorraine who was 24 years old at the time. I'm a bank executive and Lorraine works for a nationally recognized fundraising company. Jessica is a recent college graduate having taken almost six years to pass enough classes. She's in love with a successful young man, Craig, who apparently comes from a well-to-do family. They share an apartment near campus. Mother Nature decided to have some fun with us. I was in the basement trying to untangle the Christmas lights and Lorraine was bringing down a sack of meat for the freezer when a huge mouse. Her words apparently knocked her down. Okay. Maybe the mouse didn't mug her and maybe she freaked out, screamed, and fell the last few steps. She looked like a ninja warrior doing some head over heels counter attack. However, her unplanned gymnastic maneuvers did a real number on the bones and ligaments in her right leg and ankle. The second screen had a lot more emphasis to it. After a few surgeries, Lorraine was in a cast and sidelined from driving for several months. Jessica is to be married before the cast comes off so Lorraine will be wearing a very baggy dress. So here I am crawling around the basement at night with the lights out and shining a black light. If you see an actual mouse in your house, there are very likely many, many more where it came from. According to the internet, a black light can detect mouse poop and lead you to their international headquarters. I was doing a fantastic job of getting all grimy and dusty. And my luck, these mice cleaned up after themselves. I went up the laundry chute and was greeted with a glow from the laundry basket. It was a very strong glow, and it was on Lorraine's panties. Back to the internet to see what this is all about. I wonder if puke shows up differently with the black light. I hope I wouldn't find out apparently, semen has stains that give off the sharp glow I am seeing when I read that. I broke out in a sweat felt very dizzy and my stomach started bouncing off my lungs, heart, and kidneys. As long as I can keep stomach from discovering my throat, I won't have to toss my cookies. Wait. Maybe that stain is from one of the rumps we've had recently. Nope, I haven't had sex with her since her accident last week. Jessica has been coming over a couple of days a week to do laundry, help around the house, and take Lorraine shopping. Lorraine wears much larger panties than Jessica, so chances are pretty good that it belongs to Lorraine and was soiled very recently. I put the panties in a Ziploc bag and put it in a drawer of my workbench in the garage. On the internet, I found the neatest little gadget it's a smartphone case with a built-in backup battery and voice-activated recorder. I ordered one and had it overnight to my office. It was an easy thing to convince Lorraine to use this new gadget as her phone was always needing recharge. Every night, I would wait for Lorraine to get ready for bed and then quickly download the audio and reset it for another day. The only shocker was the depth of the disrespect. I knew from the soiled panties that they were meeting too. Sometimes three times a week. As strong as my love for Lorraine had been, it had been replaced with hatred far more consuming. Dealing with this fair or however many there had been was nothing compared to the devastation I felt of my daughter's behavior. There were plenty of recordings to choose from, but this is the one I uploaded and turned into text. Mom, you know you're going to get caught drop you off at George's house again. Roger is so trusting. It won't happen. Yes. Pull into the driveway. George gives me the creeps. What do you see in him? He makes me feel things Roger has never made me feel. Someday, you'll find out for yourself. Still, why does he always badmouth Dad? Has he even met him? He has met George at a few of the fundraising events. I don't see you stepping up in your father's defense. Fair enough. Is this ever going to stop? Where's his wife? Why not divorce debt? George says his wife is too busy with his kids. 
There's no need for a divorce. I'm happy. Roger's happy. You're happy. Going to pay for that wedding yourself, good one. Go make George happy. Pick you up at noon, the recordings pick up grunting and moaning of the monkey piling. Unlike those stories I've read, there wasn't any pillow talk about anything. It sounds like, oh, yeah, um, ugh. This obviously wasn't reviewing the itinerary for the upcoming gala. My mind was blank as to how to get Lorraine to take her phone into the bedroom when she and George. The private investigator was only able to get coming and going pictures. Posed of the coffee cup he had used. I slipped from one of the panties a piece of comb stained with some of Lorraine's hair and the coffee cup off for analysis, no surprises when those results returned. After each escapade, I put the panties in a Ziploc bag and used a black marker to date the back. I put the nightly news on the TV and when they showed the date on the screen, I took a picture showing the bag and TV screen. I saw the bags in the garage. I had to buy new panties to replace the growing collection, I had done respectable job of, of avoiding spending time with Lorraine. Well, actually, it wasn't all that hard as her indifference towards me made it pretty simple. I did attempt on a few occasions to get Jessica to open up, but she was full of one-word responses. Her body language was that of someone under stress. Perhaps it's the upcoming wedding. The attorney laid out the consequences of the divorce, split the assets 50, 50th, and hefty alimony. Since her fundraising work paid very little, obviously Lorraine thought my choice would be that it's cheaper to keep her root. No way is that cheating when you're getting paid to screw George seems like I need to retire and give all of my wealth away. I'm well into the order of events and started building my exit strategy. I told Lorraine that we should think about getting her a new car and had her sign to her title so we could act quickly if we found a bargain. I was told that it was about time. Yes. It was my dear, I reasoned that Francis should secure locked boxes in most of the banks around our fair city. I started converting my assets into American Eagle gold coins and giving them to Francis in the locked boxes. Cashing in my 401k and paying the penalty was a no-brainer. Brokerage accounts and life insurance policies took a little more time, but Lorraine, scumsucker, that she was showed no sign of acquiring morals anytime soon. I put a vacation hold on the mail so I could intercept everything. Lorraine and I had established a home equity line of credit. We had used it to pay for six years of college. I'm guessing I never paid for an ethics course. I was able to run up the debts to the maximum the bank would allow. I started buying from gold dealers in nearby cities to spread the purchases around. As long as I was in those cities, I opened a few more lockbox accounts for Francis. The end was in sight. Jessica's wedding was a week from Saturday. Francis refused to sell her home, so it sat vacant until now. I purchased one of those no-contract cell phones. I was able to get a pretty good early retirement bonus and turned the final paycheck into cash. Returning to my house, I started packing. After several carloads, my prized possessions were enjoying a new address, I left my bedroom looking like I was still living there. I had left very little money in any of the joint accounts, I printed out statements and visited with the attorney again. I would have Lorraine served at her fundraising gala in two days. My net worth wasn't enough to pay the upcoming credit card bills and mortgage. I lined up the 13 bags with panties and shot a video zooming in on the date and TV screen of each after the upload finished. I attached it to the emails, which were about to be sent also attaching the PI reports, the voice recording transcript, and the DNA analysis made for a nice package. Jessica arrived to take Lorraine to the gala. No reason for me to attend, you know, people I don't know. I'd get bored yada yada. Got it, I'm just a banker. The backstabbers had left so I set about reporting credit cards stolen and cancelling cell phones. The ad created to sell Lorraine's car attracted a cash buyer who was knocking on my door. 
price cards below Blue Book and the response is lively. The chain reaction was underway. While waiting for the confirmation that Lorraine had been served, I finished cleaning out what I had left in my bedroom, just before Lorraine was to make her Kino speech she was served. I received the confirmation call and was warned by the report of her going and dragging her sorry ass out to Jessica's car. I turned on my computer and started sharing the good news. Emails were cyber spreading my anger. I was not going to let his wife remain in the dark any longer. I apologize if you did not want to know. I did want to know and no one had the decency to inform me. Your husband, George, and my wife, Lorraine, have been enjoying an extended affair. George, the first believed you have a meeting in the morning with your board of directors, your director of charitable giving, George, and one of his assistants my wife, Lorraine, have been having sex while drawing your paychecks. I will contact you to discuss how best to keep your organization out of the news. I suspect some of your major contributors may lack the understanding necessary to keep funding home records. You will be required to inform anyone seeking a reference that George is not suited to manage people. I won't let you pass the trash. Lorraine enjoyed your new life, wife, I love you with all of my heart unconditionally. It wasn't enough for you. I have resigned from my job and moved out of the house. I have converted all of our assets to cash and given it away. We have few assets left, so whether you get half of them or all of them, we will be in bankrupt within a few months. You might be able to live with your boyfriend, although his life is about to be turned upside down. What I can never forgive is your corruption of Jessica. May you die a slow, miserable death you worthless Roger, and the one that hurt me the most Craig and Jessica. It is with a very heavy heart that I must inform you that I will not be escorting Jessica down the aisle at your wedding. I have recently learned that the review of wedding vows and mine are completely incompatible. Jessica has not only known of her mother's infidelity, but has worked to facilitate it, helping to systematically destroy my 25-year marriage. Leaves me no choice. But to excuse myself from your wedding, Craig, I could not look you in the eyes and deliver to your arms someone who thinks that marriage vows are only something you babble during your ceremony. If I said nothing and she eventually follows her mother's tutoring, I could not live with myself knowing you would be feeling the same pain and suffering I am enduring. If you would still like me to attend I will, but only as a guest in the background. Jessica, I'm more than disappointed with you but will always love you. You will understand this more when you have children of your own. Best wishes, Roger. The first turned the computer off and left my home for quite possibly the last time. I parked a few blocks away, walked back, and waited as I figured Jessica drove up and sprinted into the house. Lorraine was limping towards the door when Jessica announced he's not here. His closet is empty. There's not much left in his office, whether they knew it or not, they were feeling things those in the Great Depression had fell. People had placed their trust and faith in the banks, always being there only to end with nothing but memories when the runs on the banks occurred. It only took a few days for people to track me down as I had made no attempt to hide from anyone. The venom spewed in my direction was somewhat helpful. Misery does, in fact, love company. How could you was constantly tossed in my direction? Really? My bad? What was I thinking? Wait, isn't it my question to you? Craig called off the wedding. Who saw that coming? I never shed a tear until I opened my door few days after the divorce was finalized and found Jessica standing there. I could not begin to describe the pain, look on her face with her lips quivering as she forced her words out in a shaky voice. I'm sorry. I opened my arms and she buried her head in my chest and held me close. I wrapped my arms around her. She softly sobbed for more than several minutes. Eventually, she pushed away, looked into my eyes, but was unable to form the words. I offered stay next time she wouldn't pretend. Again, tried to say something but abandoned the attempt. What I need to go, she turned and walked away. When I felt the wet spot on my shirt from her tears, I was unable to prevent my tears from joining hers. 
the healing has begun. I watched the business use much more than I ever have and constantly checked the price of gold. Francis gives me a gold coin every once in a while. Lorraine now working the swing shift at a gas station is unable to make any of the payments and I am in no position to do so either. Foreclosure is in my future. Once the divorce was finalized. And I came to a mutually beneficial arrangement. Such things go. I legally can't disclose any details George is having trouble finding work. His ex-wife is still busy with his kids. I never did find any mice in the basement. I guess that ninja attack did the trick. Much love cheer.